Growing up in Detroit, Michigan, none of my friends in grade school or high school traveled at all. In fact, yeah. I could count the number of people that even had a passport that I knew on one hand. I get to college, U of M is very cosmopolitan. You have a lot of New Yorkers, a lot of people from California, a lot of rich kids from overseas who come there. So there are a lot of kids studying abroad, getting travel, all this fun stuff. And I really wanted that. And I was like, you know what? I want to take a break from school. I'm going to take a gap year. I'm not going to apply to medical school. And I want to travel. How did, uh, how did your dad feel about that? Uh, not thrilled. <laughs> And he said what I think any blue collar dad at that point, and mind you, he was concerned about his pension now. He was not making money with the city. He was very concerned about himself and making house payments. He said, get a fucking job. Yeah. I'm not paying for you to fart around <laughs> Europe and find yourself. What, do you, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so I have this biology degree, and I don't know what I want to do for a career. I know that I want to make some good money so I could save up to go on this European backpacking trip. So I get a job in a lab doing research. And mm -hmm. in undergrad, I, I really just barely went to class, got good enough grades to test well to, to get into medical school. But I didn't do any extracurricular activities. I didn't do any sort of research projects, anything like that in my college career. So now I'm thrust into a lab. And the lab that I join, my boss at the time, my principal investigator is what they're called, he had put together a amazing proposal that got funded to look for head and neck cancer stem cells. So my job essentially was I'd scrub up, I'd go in the OR, my boss would be doing a surgery on someone's head or neck or tongue, it was oral cancers. He'd cut some of the tumor out, give it to me, I'd run down to the animal room, I'd grow it in a mouse, and then I would do a bunch of flow cytometry on it and try to target specific cell populations to implant in future mice to see if I could regrow the heterogeneity of this tumor. Fascinating project. And I'm basically fresh out of college and mm. I'm doing it. Yeah. I'm running a $3 million machine. I got this grant that's riding on me and my work. And after a little over a year, almost a year and a half, I have six mice. We do a number of serial assays to figure out the small population of cells that were CD44 positive, CD24 negative, for those of you who are total bio nerds. These are <laughs> cell surface markers that I was uh, basically testing for. And I could inject 100 of these cells and I could regrow a tumor in a mouse. My boss is ecstatic. I'm telling my dad I'm going to be a published author. So all this skipping out on medical school that my dad was worried about, yeah. like, hey, dad, I got a scientific career starting here. I'm still doing it. So I was really focused again on making my dad proud, even though I, I wasn't fully fulfilling his dream for me. And I walk into the lab and my boss says, Stanford scooped us. And I'd never heard that. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant. And I was very confused. I said, what do you mean Stanford scooped us? He's like, yeah, we're not going to be able to publish our paper. And I said, what? We're not going to be able to publish our paper. And he's like, yeah, uh, unfortunately, this really famous stem cell biology lab at Stanford, they also isolated head and neck tumor cells that I, they think are cancer stem cells, and they're going to publish in PNAS, which was a, a fantastic journal. And So I basically, was, they beat you guys to the punch? Yeah. Okay. 